shown because it's been around for so long, there are lots of different variations. Um, so the first one that we have um, is the small shroom. So instead of having keys, um, you might be able to see that it has um, lots of small holes on the base instead. So instead of pressing down on keys to produce notes, you have to cover the holes directly with your fingers. Um, and because it's small, you'll have to sit down while playing it, while mine, um, yeah, I can't be standing or running around. Um, the second one is my version, which is the 36 key soprano shun, meaning that I play the highest part um, in the orchestra and so on. Um, and then over there, um, that's just another big version of the shun. It's got 42 keys, so a much lighter range. Um, and there are also other less common varieties. Um, so the shun first originated in China, and um, the earliest record of the instrument is from a really long time ago, 1100 BC. Um, the earliest actual instrument that archaeologists discovered is from around 100 BC, so that's during the time of China's Han Dynasty. And then some of the earlier models, like the one that you can see in the picture, um, look slightly different from mine. So they're smaller, handheld. Um, you press down on the holes instead of these shiny silver keys that look more like a Western instrument. And um, they have different amounts of pipes. So that one has um, either 17 or 21. But these days, you can have instruments with 36, like mine, or 42, like in the slide earlier. Um, this painting is from the Tang Dynasty. So that's um, around 600 to 900 of AD. So now about the actual parts. Um, so here we have the vertical pipes. So they differ for the different um, instruments. Um, and each of the pipes is a different note. So um, some, yeah, so basically the sound comes out of all, all of these different pipes with a bunch of different noises. Um, the keys, the shun can be either keyed or non-keyed. So mine, if you take a look at it, um, you can press down the keys. And when you press a key and um, blow at the same time or inhale, um, that will produce a noise that comes out of one of these pipes. Um, the non-keyed shun just has um, a hole over here that you cover with your fingers. And that like adjusts um, how the air goes in and out. So um, the bass is this part down here. It's airtight and it's, oh, sorry, I'll lift it up so that you guys can see it. But um, it's the shiny metal part down here. Um, it's got a bunch of flaps holding it down so that it's airtight. And that acts as the resonance chamber. Um, it's got all the reeds down inside here, so 36 of them, which is why um, I can make multiple sounds at once. Um, unlike Western instruments that have a single reed, and you can only blow a single note at once. Um, and then the mouthpiece over here, um, mine is just like, it's, it's really just a long tube that you can push air through, but um, it's actually still possible to play the instrument um, when you take the mouthpiece out, and you can blow directly on the hole, although that's a little bit inconvenient because the instrument's really big and you'll have to hold it up with your arms. Okay. Um, so up there, the first picture is what it looks like when you remove the metal base. Um, so you can see like a row of the green reeds. Um, there are three rows in total with 12 reeds each. Um, and it's, they've all got like little strips cut out that vibrate when you blow in the sound. And the different lengths and sizes of the reed um, are what cause the different pitches to be produced. And then um, over here is what it looks like if you pull a single pipe. I think it's this one out of the shun. So it's um, basically just a long tube. We've got the key. When you press the key, um, it opens up a hole. And um, then you blow it at the same time. And that'll move the reed. Uh, and it'll produce a sound. OK. And then this is just, um, again, the same diagram. Um, so total parts, pipes, mouthpiece, keys, and bass. And then um, about the range of my shun. So um, it's got 36 keys total. The lowest note is G3, which I will blow. 
Um, and the highest note is F sharp six, which is. So yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big range. Um, and the keys, so the way that it's arranged is it's not like a nice scale where you go from lowest on the right to highest on the left. Um, instead, the lowest keys are arranged in the middle and um, the highest ones are arranged on the outside. Um, that's actually also pretty convenient because most of the keys that you'll play are in the middle of the range, so you'll just be stuck with your fingers like um, somewhere in between the middle and the outermost part. Um, this diagram here is uh, just a copy um, of the piano's keys and then comparing um, how much range my shunt can cover. So it's like the upper middle section of the piano, um, which is a decent range for most pieces. Um, and then for comparison, I've got the ranges of some other wind instruments. So for example, the C flute um, is a little bit more high pitched than mine. And um, the oboe is also slightly more high pitched. So um, yeah, you can, it, um, this is the soprano shum too, which means it's the highest one um, out of the most varieties. So most of them are pretty low pitched. And then, um, so this is a diagram of one of my keys um, if the mouthpiece is on the bottom. So uh, it's got the lowest keys in the middle and the highest ones on the outside. Um, so the three rows are here, right? And I'm inserting my hands into it. So my thumb covers um, most of the keys on the outside row. Um, and then my index finger takes care of the ones inside the middle. It's, they pretty much look the same, it's just keys to press down on. And then the rest of my third, fourth, and fifth fingers um, basically take turns at pressing these keys. Um, occasional, I think, most of the time I will not be using my pinky because this thing's pretty big and there's no way to reach completely around. Um, in the image, um, I basically divide it up into um, which fingers are touching which keys. So um, yeah, it'll kind of be just like playing it by pressing the keys. Okay. And then um, the first of the common techniques that I'll be demonstrating um, are chords. So because um, it's a polyphonic woodwind, that means I can press multiple notes at once and play multiple notes at once, and they all come out sounding um, equally loud based on how much air I put in. So here's, um, I'm going to just demonstrate a couple examples of really basic chords. Okay, so um, this is the C major chord. So I've got um, C5, E5, and G5. Um, I've highlighted like where they are on the um, key mat. So um, I'll just be playing with my fourth finger, my index finger, and my thumb. So. This is kind of what the chord sounds like. Um, and then I'll be doing one more. So um, <laughs> you'll notice that, like, again, it's like the same spacing for the keys, but um, like the arrangements of the fingers can really vary. So this one is D major, um, D, F sharp, and A. <laughs> um, they're not coming out at all the same sound because of the microphone, but. Um, yeah, it's normally pretty even. So the notes are coming out individually? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're not, not simultaneously coming out? Um, so it's individually coming out? They're coming out of the different pipes because of the different reeds. So would one blow mm -hmm. get the three notes out? Is that what it is? Yeah, just one breath for all three. One breath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, that's actually pretty special. I don't think there are a lot of other like wind instruments that can do that. Okay, um, and then there's like, um, a clip of a video here, I think, of like a professional. So he's gonna demonstrate some more techniques and I'll just talk about them briefly. So there's staccato, which a lot of instruments have. It's short clipped notes. And that can be achieved by using the tongue. So um, by blocking and unblocking the mouthpiece, um, you'll get that variation in um, how long the notes are. Um, double notes are just um, 
Again, another tongue technique. It's a way to um, get the notes to come out really fast, and it's like a really popular thing for um, composers to put in for shun pieces. And then some other higher level skills. Um, I think you'll see like just some really interesting tongue techniques that produce some cool sounds. So um, of those techniques, so there's a couple where um, he's using his tongue to like produce like almost these, almost these like fluttering noises. Um, so it requires like a lot of really weird muscles to do that. But basically, by um, rapidly moving the tongue, um, it produces like these wobbling noises. And then the second one is where he's playing a piece that's um, got two different melodies going on, and that's only possible because you can play multiple different. Um, so I'm going to wrap up with some demonstration pieces on my instrument, so I'll be setting that up. Um, the first one, I'll just be performing right here. Um, This piece is called the Kacha Turian Saber Dance, and it's got a couple of the techniques that I've been talking about. <laughs> Do you want to turn it off, maybe? Yeah. Um, Is there an off button? There's a
my first page. Um, it's gonna teach a lot of the um, twanging techniques and then um, also a lot of chords. So you'll see that being used a lot. Um, the second one I'm going to play is a video from about two years ago, and it shows like how my instrument is used um, in an ensemble. So it's just me playing with like the background track from one of the pieces that our band did a while ago. So um, that second piece is from um, a popular, it's a song from a popular Japanese animation. So um, neither of these pieces are Chinese. Um, so even though uh, the shang is a Chinese instrument, it's pretty versatile and um, it's sometimes been used by Western composers in their orchestras too. So yeah, it's got a wide variety of uses. So that's the end of my presentation. Um, does anyone have like any questions about the instrument or how it works? You guys would like to come take a closer look or something. How heavy is it? Um, it's okay. It's it's a lot heavier than like a flute or something. Uh, I'm not good at estimating. Let's 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 feel. Okay. Um, make sure to hold it by the bass. Yeah. Yeah, this is quite heavy. Yeah. That's why you have to sit it. Right. It's yeah. it's really inconvenient to right, stand right, and stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Alex is going to go ahead with his presentation on this time.